everyone, I'm Charlene from Sosa Dressmaking and today I am going to be sharing part one of my Fibre Mood Mindy Sew Along. So the last two times that I made this dress a lot of people asked me about different things, especially how you attach the sleeve, um, the like band onto the bodice. It is tricky so I thought the best way to show would be with a sew along. Now with this one here I have made a few changes to the pattern so I am going to talk through those first. But before that, I today I'm actually not wearing any Mimates, which is strange for me to be wearing everything I'm ready to wear. But I see this jumper hanging in my wardrobe this morning and I really loved it. So it's a Zara sweater but it has this um, like net at the bottom um, and then her leggings underneath. I really love this. I Something obviously you could make very easily just with a sweatshirt pattern and then add on like a gathered skirt to it but why make it when I already have it and I love wearing it so um, yeah. So the first thing or the main thing that I've changed with the Mindy this time is really just to make it more seasonal. I have first of all lengthened the sleeve quite a lot so I have added 28 centimeters onto the length of the sleeve so you can see I'll show you it's from the pattern piece the sleeve starts about there it is coming down past my wrist that is because I will then be adding on where is it in here I do have a cut out. Anyway, I will be adding on a cuff to the bottom, so I'm going to gather in the end of the sleeve and have just a wee cuff around my wrist. The way that I drafted the cuff is very, very simple. You just need it to go around this part of your hand, so you're measuring this width of your hand at the narrowest part and then just doubling that and adding your seam allowance. Um, if you're not sure, if you're worried about that, just add a wee bit extra on and then it can always be trimmed down at the end. But that is the size that has always worked for me. So yeah, I have lengthened the sleeve and I'm going to add on a cuff. The other change that I've made this time is because the fabric I am using is this lovely lightweight Lady McElroy, it's the Moonshine Daisy Viscose. Like that's two layers there and it is so so light and drapey that's one layer and it is a wee bit see-through so i'm actually going to line the bodice so i'm just using the same fabric self-lined and what i've done is i've just cut two of the front bodice and two of the back bodice and the way it's attached will be pretty similar to how the facing was attached the other problem i've had with it is my facings um obviously i notice it more at the front it does sort of poke up a wee bit it doesn't sit completely flat just because of the nature of the top I think what I'm going to do with my other two is just stitch it down so you'll see top stitching on the outside but I don't think I think it'll look fine with the dress anyway but yeah so I am going to try it this time with the fully lined bodice and see if that then makes a difference I think it is a very easy dress that you could to add a full line into it's the same with the skirt you would just need to either add on I would maybe wouldn't add on as much of a, like a full skirt but yeah and then the last change is I have lengthened the skirt as well so with the skirt I have added 30 centimeters on to the length so that will take it to about it starts about there so it's kind of like midi length so it's going to come to about here sort of halfway up my calf so yeah, makes it a wee bit more seasonal, I think, for this time of year. I am planning to do this in a black viscose as well, but I didn't want to do black for so long because you just wouldn't be able to see anything. <laughs> the stitching would just be invisible. So yeah, that is my plans for this. So I am going to get started, I think, so that I can put this up on YouTube and over on Instagram. I'm probably going to do it in two parts. So first part will be the bodice and zip and the skirt and then the sleeves will be in the second part. The other thing I'll mention is the um, the invisible zip, it's a side zip 
a lot of people had mentioned that they didn't actually need it for when they were going for putting it on and off so you might be able to leave that step out i will when we're doing it i'll probably still put a zip in this one we'll see but I'll tell you when you can try just basting up the side and then see will it fit, will it not and you can go from there then. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so first thing we want to do is sew the darts in place. Now, I do have a little tip for when you're sewing in bust darts. Um, let's look at this pinned. So we obviously want to just backstitch at the start. Then as you're sewing, so most starts are marked in a straight line, but when you think about it, you know, what it is you're sewing, you're curved around here. So I always start carving it in towards the end so instead of going in a straight line curve it then about a centimeter before the end I will take out my wee tailor tacks reduce my stitch length down to one and finish sewing So what this does by reducing the stitch length it means I mean I wouldn't recommend this if you're unsure the dart shape is going to work for you because that's hard to get out but it means that you're not having to worry about tying the threads off at the end you can just snip them away and that is not going to unravel so there is my first dart you can see that it is actually curving more into a circle shape as opposed to just being a triangle so i will go ahead and do the rest of my darts now so the next step is to add the gathering stitches along the top the top edge of the skirt will be the one with the notches so I'm just going to put my stitch length up as high as it goes in this machine. It's six, most machines will be five. And so two rows of stitches, the full length of the skirt. I will be doing um, my first stitch sort of about one centimeter, well, just less than one centimeter in. And then the second stitch will probably be a wee bit over the one centimeter line. have both sides gathered and the back skirt is now pinned into the back skirt is pinned onto the back bodice I am gonna now change back to a normal stitch length and then just stitch this along the one centimeter seam line because I have done one line a wee bit outside it it should keep both it should keep the gathers even running down the way I also like to sew it with my gathers facing up because then it means I have more control over them and I can catch any way like plucks or anything that's not going to look right and not have to hopefully unpick it all.
So now at this stage, once we have attached the top, so the bodice is attached to the skirt now, it is, I have um, overlocked down each side. The, if you are not doing a lined version like I'm doing, you also need to overlock the seam here where the bodice and the skirt are meeting, but obviously I did it on this side, but then realized that, well, this here's actually all gonna be covered with my lining. So I didn't do that. So then we just need to remove all these gathering stitches, which should be easy enough to pull out. At this stage, you should put in the zip, but as I was saying before, I'm gonna show you how to do the, it's a wee bit more awkward. You'll be working with more fabric, but it's a way to figure out if you actually need to put a zip in. You might end up putting the sleeves in, basting it together and not actually need to put a zip in as well. So that's it for this, for part one. Next, I will be showing you how to put in the sleeves and then the next step will be, it might end up being in three parts. The next one will be then all the finishing touches. So attaching the lining and zip or no zip, we'll see. So I hope you've enjoyed part one of my Fibre Mood Mindy So Long and I will see you all for part two. Bye. Hi everyone, I'm Charlene from Sosu Dressmaking and welcome to part two of my Fibre Mood Mindy So Long. So in part one, I talked through, first of all, the changes that I made to the pattern and a few different hacks. Then we had the bodice and the skirt sewn together. I There's a few tips on how I sew my darts and do my gathering stitches too. So now we are on to the tricky part that everyone has been asking me about, the sleeves. So let's get stuck into it. So one of the most important things at this point is to make sure you have all your notches and all your way drill marks, tailor tacks marked really, really clearly. The first time I made this, that was one of the things that I probably wasn't as careful over and did cause a lot of problems. So on the sleeve, there should be three double notches on the back your shoulder notch and then single shoulder notch and then another two notches, two single notches on the front. So before you get to this sort of angled piece here. So your gathering stitches need to go from this bottom single notch and round to the second, the middle double notch. So just before the two, there we are, those two um, drill marks or tailor tax dots, whatever you want to call them. So I have done my gathering stitches on the top. I also did it on the bottom where I'll be gathering that into the cuff and I have overlocked my side seams on both sleeves. So my next step is to press the shoulder straps so it gets press the shoulder straps so it's going to get pressed in half and then the side that doesn't have any we tailor tacks or dots on it it gets pressed in by one centimeter as well so we're going to do that now i have loads of different rulers and seam guides and different things that I use for this. So this time I'm going to use this one, set it to one centimeter of my focus. There we go. So yeah, let's get this folded in half first. And then the side here gets pressed in by one centimeter. So I always check it at the start and then just keep checking it as I go along. That's one done. And that 
legs are two straps ready to go. So now we have our front and back. So we have our sleeves and the straps. So we should have two opposite straps and you'll see there is the same double notches, single notch, and then two more single notches here. So we need to match up the sleeves, right sides together with the right. Yeah. So starting with your notches, I'm gonna pin these all in place. So for this stage when I'm gathering in, I always pin outside the stitches and pin perpendicular. It's the only time I pin like this. Um, it's just, I wasn't taught this way, so it's always harder for me to do. But if you match all your notches up, then you can pull your gathering stitches in to fit in between. pin this way it means that the gathers move past the pin so yeah I am going to gather this all in get it to fit and then we stitch this down with a one centimeter seam allowance and then where we'd pressed it before all gets flipped over and top stitched down so the the strap is sort of nearly acting like a binding or a casing and covers all the stitches up. So yeah, those are the next few steps that I am going to do. start with the left hand side as it's wore or um, right hand side as you're looking at it and match up the two dots here And so the sleeve doesn't quite so if I do it. So the sleeve is coming out towards the side here and then so we sew along this point here, lift it up, pivot and trim the fabric a wee bit to release the that seam there. Um, So we'll pin down this side. So making sure your needle is going to stay down. So you're sewing right across to the edge of the neck trim sleeve band, whatever you want to call it. Then so I always find these wee embroidery scissors really handy for things like this. And you're just going to very, very carefully trim into here. So 
So once you have trimmed and pivoted it, make sure you pull the sleeve all the way round out of the way. And then hopefully this will be So there we go, not too bad, obviously you need to trim all these threads out of the way but there won't be much of a pluck there I don't think or a wee sort of a gather um, just yeah I think that's looking okay. So then the other way that you can do this, I'll show you on the other side because it's a wee bit easier here. Um, you can just do it if you don't want to pivot it and try to snip it while you're it's in the sewing machine you can just sew across this section here where you would be sewing anyway sew across there and then take it out trim it and or snip into it and then keep sewing down the other side So I've just stitched that bit of the neckband there. Then you can snip in here to the sleeve. So you want to snip into where your stitching ends and then that releases that part there. So then we're going to pin the rest of it and sew it from this side and we've snipped into it. As you're doing this you're just making sure that you keep the sleeve out of the way you can kind of see if you didn't pull it out this is where you would get the wee gather so you're just really focusing on that part so if you find it fiddly to Right there. So if you find it fiddly when you keep the needle down to snip into it then this is an alternative way. I think that one's maybe not just as perfect but that wee bit there will press out. So I mean I think a lot of this to be honest is hit and miss. If you're using a lightweight fabric and a um, quite a busy print then you don't notice it as much. I think with all these wee, this ditzy daisy print here, you're probably not going to see a lot of any of those wee mistakes there. But yeah, no, I am. I'm happy enough with that. There's a tiny wee gather or pluck. But I don't think it'll be too noticeable. So then 
we're going to do the same with the back. step in the instructions is to finish all of those raw edges um, to get a really clean finish here forgot to mention when you are sewing across the top bit so the part where this like strap attaches to the neckline so the straight across part if you try to keep that first bit of stitching just within that it gives it a cleaner finish too I know it can be quite hard just to get your needle right in that exact spot but that definitely gives it a cleaner finish so here on this side here you can see trim these straight up so So I think that one there is definitely the best. You can see it just goes right to there and then that's where you want to start pivoting down. So yes, now we would be finishing these edges and then attaching the facings, but obviously I'm doing a lined version. So now what I'm going to do is attach my bodice lining pieces. So this is the front, where's my front? And just sew this on. Then when you're doing this step with the facing and the lining, you want to make sure that you're not sewing over the sleeve again and making it, giving it those weak gathers. Um, just need to be careful of that. Okay, so I will also understitch this top part to keep that from rolling out and then I'm going to do the same on the back as well. So that's us finished with getting the sleeves in. I am going to leave it there for now and then in the next part we will sew up all these side seams. But you can see now it is starting to look like a dress. Um, so I will show you how to we'll do the side seams, sew up the inside lining, stitch it down and then figure out if we need to add a zip into it if or not. So that's it, I hope you've all enjoyed this and I will catch up with you in part three. Bye! everyone, I'm Charlene from So So Dressmaking and welcome to part 3 of my Fibre Mid Mindy Sew Along. So parts 1 and 2 we have covered the alterations that I made to the pattern. Um, then the bodice and skirt is attached and the sleeves are now attached as well, which is the tricky part. So next up I am going to be sewing the side seams, attaching the cuffs to the sleeves and hemming the dress. So. 
few things to note here I have lined my bodice because this fabric is so light so the lining the bodice lining has been overlocked at the sides and I'm just going to sew it all as one piece remembering to tuck my seam allowance up in you could have this hand stitched or you could stitch it in the ditch as well now if you want to have that all sewn down in place while you're doing this I like to do that bit of hand stitching at the end so that's why I haven't got it done yet and yeah then the other thing is there should be a zip on the invisible zip on the left right hand side um I have found with my other two that I don't need the zip I can get it on and off without so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try this one base this first um so I will sew down let's see on this side I'm going to sew the sleeve as normal when I get to the arm here I'm going to baste it to where the zip would end and then so switch to base and stitch and then just stitch the rest of it down as normal that way I can try it on and if it works okay then I can just stitch over that base and stitch again if not it's easy to take the base and stitch out and insert an invisible zip so that's what we're going to get on with now So quick try on and fits okay, goes on no problem without the zip so I'm going to go ahead and sew down here. If you can't get it on without the zip, although it is, it's a fitted bodice but because it stops quite high up it's just sort of covering your, your boobs, it's not, it probably doesn't need the zip. Um, all you would need to do is press that seam open and place your zip on top and sew it in just the way you normally would um, and yeah just in case it doesn't fit that way so the next step is to add on the cuffs so what i've done so far is just folded them in half and stitched down the short side then i'm going to Press this open first, the same. And then press it in half. my cuff so then what I will do obviously repeat that for the other one as well and I'm just going to pull in the gathering stitches the ends of my sleeves I will probably have to pull it right the way in going right past makes kids are in the background that are making play-doh gingerbread cookies is the noise you're hearing. <laughs> mm, we have to put oh. So once you have that all gathered in, you need to slip the cuff around it. Start pinning this all into place. So I think you can see there that it is, it's pretty much all gathered in 
as far as I can. There's loads of gathers, which is going to give it that really lovely, big, full shape at the bottom. And then I will repeat this on the other side. So I have my cuffs sewn on and then top stitched around in place so um, yeah they are gonna just sit out lovely. The other option you could have had here is to just do a casing and add elastic in but I wanted to have the cuff. I have my hem overlocked so now I just need to sew it. That is me done. I will obviously put a few pictures in of me wearing the finished dress but I am so happy with how this has turned out. I love the sleeves, love the shape of it. I probably I might make it now in the black. I used, I had three meters and I had a wee bit left over and um, I think I had about half a meter left over just to give us an idea of how much fabric I needed. Um, I think the pattern recommends about two meters. So yeah, I'm just more stitches to take out. The only thing I've left to do then is um, hand stitch the bodice lining in place, which I'll do tonight when I'm watching TV. And yeah, that's me done. So I hope you've enjoyed my first sew along. I really, really enjoyed filming it for you. I will have lots more content planned now over on my Kofi page. So if you want to head over there and follow me, you can also now sign up for a monthly subscription service as well as buy me a coffee. And when you do that, you'll be getting things like sew alongs, tutorials. I have some extra video content planned on a very, very special project that's coming up. I'm so excited about it. And um, it's gonna be my first sort of um, go at couture sewing and yeah I, I'm just so excited to share that so if you want to head over there and follow me so that you can keep up to date with all of that that would be great and of course if you want to support what I'm doing you can buy me a coffee um, I'm wearing today uh, yes the first few videos are I was wearing ready to wear today I'm wearing my, my belted sweater by Digital Pattern Library and my bleached blonde jeans by Megan Nielsen and the denim is from Oso Shop. 
hope you've all had a lovely day and have enjoyed watching this and I'll catch up with you all soon. Bye!